Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. Today we're looking at A Key to the City, uh, a London. This is a game by Richard Breeze. He's put out a lot of games. I should start by saying this is the first one of his I believe that I played. I played Reef Encounter, wasn't a huge fan of it, but I understand that isn't exactly the type of game that he normally makes. So what we get in the Key uh, to the City is actually a remake of another game called Keyflower. Uh, maybe a little bit streamlined. I've never actually played it, so I'm not going to comment on the differences between them. But what you get here is, I guess, a more streamlined version of it that might be a little bit easier to play, given some time to reflect on it. I think he kind of improved upon it. In this one, you're building the city of London. So it's, I think it's a little bit smaller than what you're doing in the other one. Uh, what you're going to get here is the same kind of artwork, the same kind of gameplay mechanisms. Richard Breeze fans, which he has many of, uh, tend to adore his games. But they don't seem like they get that wide distribution that many other games get. And sometimes when you have those small distributions, you get a lot of vocal, uh, very uh, rabid fans. But if it was ever to blow up, not a lot of people will like it. I'm not saying that's the case, but that does happen sometimes. And you see that with re-releases with older board games where people are crazy about it. But then when it actually gets re-released, it gets a lukewarm reception. That is because those people who liked it or a small minority and really liked it. So what we get here is this little bidding game where you're bidding on tiles with meeples, or what they're called in this game, keeples. Um, these keeples, or meeples, you're bidding. And, and if somebody bids on a tile and they bid blue, because everybody nobody has their own individual colors, then if you want to raise the bid, you have to bid to blue, and you may or may not have that. Uh, the same rule applies when you're activating tiles. You can activate it until it's already been activated. You just got to use the same color and more. Um, it's a very neat little mechanic. I like it a lot. It's um, The game system takes 120 minutes to play. That's the max. Um, I, I don't know how it would take that long. Uh, maybe that's with some built-in analysis paralysis or people who just play a little bit slower than us. I found the game to move at a pretty good clip. Maybe an hour, hour and 15 minutes, hour and 20 minutes. Uh, and then your time may vary if you're a slower player. The game is really only four rounds. Even though when you set it up, it looks like five. Um, I found it to be a pretty good little game. Most of the um, icons make sense once you kind of get into the game. There's not a lot of them. They're just the same icons with different colors. I'm not crazy about the artwork or the components. I guess the artwork is okay. It's more the colors that they use, the saturation of those. They seem to be very bland to me. And you have a lot of things like these connectors are just like the old wooden pieces you used to see in games, you know, maybe 10, 12 years ago. Um... I did like the 3D effect. It's just some cardboard they put together that really helped out. The components um, are good. They're nice. Um, nothing wrong with them. It's nothing that pizzazzes you at this point of what we're doing. I did like the bidding structure, uh, but the game just never had that aha moment where you're just super excited to play it and you make that big, big move. Um, with some newbies, I think there could be some runaway problems. There's some things that you have to be careful of. You can't let somebody get too many tiles. Um, you can't let somebody get too far ahead and have too good of a little engine combination going, even though you can go over there and use their stuff. Um, at the end of it, I think the, the scoring was pretty close, pretty tight. There isn't a lot of scoring difference between the tiles, except for the last round when tiles start coming out. And I think the more you play, the more you kind of know what's coming that fourth round, that fourth era. You can plan for those a little bit more long-term, objective-wise of what scoring is going to come out. Uh, we didn't look at those before we played our first time. We were kind of like, oh, well, I'm going to go after this one. You're going to go after that one. I'll block you from that one. Where when we played it again, we kind of knew what was coming, and we kind of built up towards those things if need be. Um, the first time we played, one of the players ran away with the game. They had one really good turn. 
but that's not going to be indicative of the game when you're playing it over and over. I think you're going to get to know it better. And that was really just a dumb strategy on our part. It has no fault of the game whatsoever. Overall, I think you're going to find a very, very uh, solid game here. It's not going to wow you. It's not the greatest game ever made. But it is very good. And it's very solid mechanically. The mechanisms are fantastic. And I think a lot of people are going to have fun with this. I, th I wish more people could see it. I'm not sure it had the wide distribution through Kickstarter that it could have. Maybe somebody will pick up and run with it, but I haven't seen that with a lot of his other games. So your mileage may vary. If you want this game, now would be the time to strike before they go out of print. Uh, I think you get a solid, solid Euro experience. Keep in mind there is bidding in this game. That's going to turn some people off. But here I think it's utilized very well. Now you're drawing meeples or these keeples from a bag, so there is some luck in what... Um, keeples you're able to have for the turn so and if you want to bid for blue on something or somebody you really want to tile and somebody gets there before you and bids one blue and you don't have two blue well you're just stuck you're gonna to have to find a different plan of action here and that can be really fun for some people for some people they don't like that but keep in mind those tiles only score you points if you get them you can still utilize them uh, if somebody else buys them, purchases them, or they're being while they're being bid on, you can still utilize those as kind of a one-time off. Um, but when you have those tiles in front of you, they're going to score you the big points. So there is some luck. It is mitigated in design, I believe, um, but it is there, I think, where if you kind of get hosed a little bit, you're just not going to have anything to play for. So um, there are many ways to combat that in this game. I don't want you to think this is a luck-based game. This is not a munchkin game. There's a lot of ways to combat it, but I just wanted to mention that, that sometimes you're not always going to draw what you want, and you're going to have to come up with a strategy for that and around it. I find that interesting and fascinating. That may frustrate some gamers, but for me, it worked great. Um, there isn't a whole lot, a whole lot of interaction with other players outside of this bidding uh, and utilizing it. So I don't think you're going to spend a lot of time running up the price on people it's more like oh you want to do that too well now i'm gonna to have to pay more to do it because you were first in turn order but you also get to choose turn order so when you pass well there's passing and there's sailing but when you sail i.e i'm passing and not going to take another turn you kind of the first person that does so gets to choose their turn order that's going to be very important sometimes in this game i'll show that to you when i show you how you play the game You're going to get screens in each of the different colors, which the buildings that you start out with, which they're very small, so you can easily look at them from side to side. You really want to sit across from each other in this game. You get a draw bag with all the little different keeples in them, three different colors, red, yellow, and blue. You've seen these straight taken out of Carcassonne. You also get some of these 3D card board buildings. There's a few of these that are 12 points that you'll be building in the game. And these will sit right on there. They look kind of neat, but they're made out of cardboard and they stand right up on the table. There are also these small little chits. There's three different ones that you'll get. They're double-sided and fairly thick and nice. The tiles in the game are very thick and nice. They're all come double-sided. Uh, these happen to be the river tiles. You'll see icons at the building and they always be able to flip them over and they show you what's on the other side. I like these very nicely and you'll see more of these in the flow of the game. The main component of the game are going to be these wooden connectors that you'll be using. Uh, very old school. They come in a few different colors and are very nice. I should also point out that the insert of the box is fairly neat. I, I didn't want everything done, so I put these little containers in. These do not come with these containers, but there is a slot for each type of component in the game. It won't fit the tiles, but it does fit the goods, but it won't hold anything in place when you turn it upside down, inevitably. Let's take a look at the components here. First off, you're gonna get a bunch of rule books and a bunch of different languages, which always cracks me up. But also you're gonna get this little book that's gonna give you an outlook of London with all the buildings and where they're at, and a little bit of a history of each building that you'll be making in the game. I think that's a nice The rules of the game, I felt like there were some holes missing in it. I felt like there were some things that we weren't sure of. So one of the things that we weren't sure of was when you, when you have your little burrow in front of you, when workers are placed on that at the end of the round, uh, whether you get to take those behind your screen or use them or they go into the bag. We played it as if you get to keep those workers. We weren't sure. I didn't find it in the rules. If you can find it, fantastic. You're a better reader than me. I could not find it, and that might be troubling to some. I also found um, you know, the rules a little bit 
the rules in this game are really easy. I mean, really, you're just bidding, using, or upgrading a tile. That's all there is to it. And that was a couple of things that I found uh, kind of difficult, was just which workers you keep and which ones go in the bag. Um, I think they could be worked out. I didn't find anything on the Geek on it on a curious uh, glance at it real quick. Um, I didn't find anything on that. Perhaps everybody else in the world knew it. It seemed like it made sense. If they were on my borough, I get to keep them. That was kind of the price of using somebody else's was you were giving them more uh, keeples or meeples to use. That was interesting. I like that. Otherwise, I found the rules to be good. Um, the icons made a lot of sense and everything worked out fine when we were playing it. That was just a one or two little rules that we weren't quite sure about. So to play the game, it's fairly easy. Each side is worth one victory point. If you upgrade it, it's worth six, and there are some that are worth 12. So let me kind of show you how this is going to be. You're going to have, a, you're going to have five possible actions on a turn. Um, the first possible action is you will bid on these. And let me kind of show you how the bidding is done. So if you want to bid, you will have a number of meeples that you will bid. And you always have to bid the right color. So based on where you're sitting, there's six different spots on this, you will bid. So let's say you're sitting over here, you can bid one yellow. Now if I want to raise the bid, I can place two. And then it comes back to my turn, if I don't want to bid anymore, I can take this guy and move him or leave him there. And that's how the bidding is. At the end of the round, the highest bid wins it. Now if I want to utilize it, I can place a keeple on him. Now, then I get to use the power, which is just get one of these tokens. Great. Now if the next person wanted to use it, he would have to put two meeples down. But because I played blue, he can't play two yellow. He would have to play two blue, and then he could also activate it. So we have to play one more than the person after you. If the next person played two, then the next third person would have to play three. Now if I had anti this up and played two the first time to activate it, then the next person would have to pay three. Now. If you own this tile, and I had bid an auction and won this, on the next turn I can uh, upgrade it. I'd have to, in this case, I'd have to have a blue connector and a white connector. If it has that, and I put a worker on it or, or a keeple, then I can flip it over, and now it's worth six victory points. And every time I activate it, I get one of each of these versus just one red one. So it, it becomes more powerful. So those are the three actions you can normally do in a game. You can bid on it, you can activate it, or you can upgrade it if you own it. The third, fourth thing you can do is pass. And that just means you're passing your turn and the next person can go. You're still in the round, but if everybody passes, the round is over. The fifth possible thing you can do is sail away. And you'll have a ship, and on your turn, let me show you a different one. On your turn, you get to pick, if you're first, you get to pick which one you want. And this will set you up for next round. So if you go here, you're first player, and you get seven uh, keeples on your next turn. If you go here, you're second, you get eight, and so on and so on. What's interesting is if you go last, you get the, the preceding river card, and each of these have a different power at the bottom. So if you go last, get the least amount of meeples, but you get the, the river card, um, not this one, the preceding one, and it'll have a power on it, usually a way to score victory points. So that's the five possible things you can do. You're going to play through four eras of the game. Highest victory points wins. Who should buy this game? I would recommend this game for Euro players, people who want something a little out of the ordinary, who might like the idea of building up the city of London, who likes that bidding mechanism. I, I like it. It's simple. It's simplistic. You felt like you've seen it before, but really you haven't. You're drawing these meeples from a bag of one of three different colors, red, blue, and yellow, and you have to not only outbid the person, but you have to bid the correct color. Not only bidding on the tiles, but utilizing the tiles. Everything you do, even upgrading it, requires the placement of these meeples in the right colors. You can't always do what you want because you're just going to run out of the right color or meeples or keeples in general. So that's kind of interesting to me. Um, the game plays a little bland. There's not that big ha aha moment. There's not that I'm, I just scored a bunch of points and had this great move I've been building up. It just kind of goes along and at the end of the game, you score up and see who won. Uh, because it lacks that big moment, I think it will falter for some people and maybe not have the gaming experience that they were hoping for. 
I never really felt like I was building up this engine and all of a sudden, boom, slots, you know, given the big uppercut and this is what I've been planning for the whole game, it came to fruition. Instead, it's a bunch of small movements that add up to a little bit bigger movement. Um, all the tiles score one on the front and six on the back. You have this few that go all the way up to 12, so one, six, 12. But for the most part, they are what they are and they all kind of play the same. Um, as opposed to what you think people are going to want and then what uh, keepables that you can keep each round. So for me, I think this game is somebody who already has a solid Euro collection. They're looking for something a little bit different. Richard Breeze fans, people who want this for their collection. Maybe Keyflower fans who are looking for that streamlined upgrade. Otherwise, I think even though this is like such a solid, good game and we play so many bad games. I would tell you to try this one out. Make sure that bidding mechanism is for you. I think it's personally fantastic. Um, if you're looking for a blind buy, I think you would be safe with this one. Um, just see kind of what you think about it. And the playthrough here should help you out and tell you what you think about it. So thanks for watching Purge Reviews. I do ask that you subscribe it. This is a game that I'll be keeping. And each time I do a review, we tell you whether we purge it or if we keep it into our collection. This time it's going to be a keeper, but for a little bit different reasons. And I want to take a little bit longer review and look at this because this is such a solid game, but still not one that would wow you. So there's a lot of games that review here at Purge Review. Subscribe to the channel and you'll be the first ones to check them out. Thanks for watching.